we're on. <laughs> uh, I am uh, not home, and it's always such a, it's, it's just a cheapy little camera with a very expensive microphone. So it sounds good, but wow, that picture's jacked up. But uh, I know, my apologies for that. Um, but I got to make do with what I have. My mom's place got flooded. Um, everything stacked up on on whatever you can get off the floor. It's on a bed. It's on a cabinet. It's on a stove. Whatever, everything is up. Uh, that's going on right now. But let's get into God's word because that's the best. That's the best. Oh, I was at the March for Life today. Third annual March for Life at the Capitol Building, downtown Sacramento. Man, I'm glad I was there. So glad I was there. Uh, weather was kind of dismal, so uh, and we even got rained on during the march. Um, but nobody quit. Nobody went, oh, forget this. I'm getting wet. I'm leaving. Bleh. But like normal, anytime you have um, cloudy conditions in California, we all, for the most part, freak out and don't want to go out. Huh, huh, might be raining. Uh, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. Uh, you and me, I know. It, it, that's not us, but you know what I'm saying. Seems like the majority of people are so wimpy when it comes to that. I am looking forward to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, use of spiritual gifts. Let's take it to the Lord before we do anything. Abba Father, thank you for the success of that March for Life today. Please let it be effective. The prayers against that Planned Parenthood, the prayers against the evil that's going on uh, in, in, the, in the Capitol building as they have all but solidified all their plans to make California a sanctuary state for all abortions, not only up to the moment of birth, but now even to be able to end a life after it has already been born. Father, that's horrible. I don't know how this happened. We have lost our way so much. This is horrible. And the pregnancy life alternative centers and almost all of them Christian, faith-based, giving women free sonograms so they choose life instead of murder, which is what it is. And the way they're being attacked, vandalized, and now a bill being brought forward to completely ruin these pro-life pregnancy counseling centers, being sued by people, for misinformation is what this bill is proposing. And it's the worst part is, how do you call a sonogram misinformation? But people lie. People make stuff up. And this is welcoming and inviting people to sue these pregnancy centers. And you know there will be people who are false flags and wolves in sheep's clothing. I know, Lord, I know that they will come in and they will sue for nothing. And these places, which are already just barely getting by on our donations, will be closed. And in California, this is the only hope to actually save these innocent, innocent lives, the most innocent lives. Father, please help. I'm begging you for intervention. Please help. Oh my goodness, Lord, when I think about what they're doing and harvesting the organs and how they actually cut up and dismember a baby inside a womb. The intense pain that yet-to-be-born child is going through just so they can preserve the body cavity and, the, and, and, and harvest the organs. How do we get to this place, Lord? 
How are we so, so blind? Please, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and Lord, save them. And Father, these people who are committing these horrible atrocities, please bring them to you. Bring salvation of your, uh, through your Son, Christ Jesus, to them, Lord. And if that is not your will, then destroy them. Bring them down. Don't let them continue this. This is so horrible, Father. Please give us your Holy Spirit so we can understand what you want us to know about you. And thank you for letting me do this. And thank you to those who are watching and sharing your word. Just your word. Thank you, Father. In your name, Christ Yeshua. Amen and amen, Christ Jesus. Jesus said, anything that you ask of the Father in my name. I heard a guy do it today, and this really bugs me when I hear pastors do this, especially in front of a crowd of hundreds and hundreds of people. What an opportunity just to say the name of Christ Jesus. But they don't. They get to the end of the prayer, and they just go, Amen. And one of those pastors did that guy who came up all the way from Visalia or Fresno, something like that, because he's buddies with the guy who started March of or the uh, March for Life has been going on for decades in Washington D.C. But only three years here in Sacramento, brought to you by the California Family Council. So uh, I know they're out of Fresno as well, so that's how he knew this pastor. But it, it was a good prayer, and then at the end he just goes, "Amen." And so I said out loud, and usually when I do this, I say it very loudly because I want I want him to hear me. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Now, does that matter? Does God hear your prayer anyway? If you don't say it through. I can't make that call. All I know is the Lord himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And you can't be bothered to say the name Christ Jesus at the end of your prayer. Pastors, what is wrong with you? Okay, First Corinthians, verse twelve or chapter twelve. Man, I'm on a tear, huh? If you're still watching, good on you. Um, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans. You were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's a great way to find out if somebody is who they say they are in the Lord. You ask them, Who is the Lord? Ask them that. And if they don't, Answer, Yeshua, or Jesus, Christ, the Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Because this scripture right here says, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. No one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. What a great way to test the Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are many varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For no one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, uh, to another various kinds of tongues, 
and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are not our one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. It is not, for this reason, any less a part of the body. But if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now, God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer than the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. See, on the contrary, it's much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. But now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. And God has appointed you as, or excuse me, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, various type, kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? Various kinds of tongues, by the way. What does that mean? Different languages? That's what speaking in tongue is. If you speak in a foreign tongue, you're speaking in a language that you don't know. You didn't grow up with it. You are speaking in tongues. And here Paul writes, Various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? Verse 29. All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I show you a still more excellent way. There you go. Go back and read that for yourself. It'll help you keep it in your subconscious mind. It really will if you do that. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll do it again. Chapter 13 right here. See you later.